paperwork is revealing more about the work that was being done when an explosion sparked in downtown Sun Prairie. And police in Fitchburg have a plan of action for the spike in gun violence they're seeing in some neighborhoods there. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome to News 3 This Morning. It's Wednesday, July 18th. We're going to have the latest out of Sun Prairie following last week's explosion mm -hmm. and the results of yesterday's all-day telethon here at News 3. Lots of good news coming from that. Some pretty incredible efforts. Yeah. And Very exciting stuff. It is, really. And speaking of great news, this forecast, again, just gorgeous for maybe the la maybe our luck's running out a little bit. But well, it's <laughs> going to change up for the end of the week, but we actually need a little moisture around True. here, so the rain isn't necessarily a bad thing in the forecast. No rain though today. Here's a live look from the WIC TV sky cam. One more beautiful day ahead with sunshine and comfortable conditions. We're in the upper 50s here in Madison and most places. Mineral Point's still at 61 and the Dell's now down to 60, but Janesville has dropped to 57 and it's 58 in Prairie du Chien. Our forecast highs today are in the low 80s later on this afternoon with a light south southeast wind. Perfect conditions for concerts on the square this evening. Let's get a look at your first alert traffic maps early this morning for the six o'clock hour. Still an accident being reported on Highway 19 at Bird Street near Sun Prairie. No delays though showing up on the maps around that accident, which is good news. Just a few delays inbound on Park Street, but nothing to slow you down too much just yet. Your first alert travel times and speeds still going at posted speeds heading into Madison. It's been three days of gorgeous weather and I haven't gotten the kayak out once. Oh no, maybe today. You've been dropping Pathetic. that all week and trying to, you I know. know, kayak forecast, kayak forecast for somebody else. Yeah. Maybe I'll get out there today. You can get there today. The yeah. nap is so important. Yeah, <laughs> the nap. The nap and the telethon. That's priorities this week. Yeah, definitely. All right, thanks, Hattie. You're welcome. We start the news this hour in Sun Prairie, where the police department and OSHA continue their investigation into who could be held liable for last week's deadly explosion downtown. We now know that the company hired to work on fiber networks in the city did have the permits to do so. Two of those permits released yesterday show that Bayer Communications filed the paperwork back in April. It's subcontracted with VC Tech to actually complete the Verizon Wireless project in Sun Prairie. However, the permits do not have any mention of that Florida-based company. It's unclear if Bear Communications actually needed to list them on those documents. Meanwhile, Sun Prairie police say its criminal investigation into the death of firefighter Corey Barr will wrap up within the next few days. We're also hearing for the first time the 911 call reporting a gas main had been hit by a contractor. Okay, all right, tell me exactly what happened. It's a, we're doing a construction work and we hit a gas main. Okay, so you hit a gas line? Yes, a gas line, yes. Do you hear the gas or smell it only? Yes, it smells, yes. Just smell it or do you hear it too? You hear it and smell it. Both. It's bad, it's bad. We don't know who called 911 other than that it was a construction worker. Their name has been redacted. After that initial call, 29 others came into 911 for the leak and the, explo and the resulting explosion. The widow of Captain Corey Barr, the firefighter who died in last Tuesday's explosion, says she could not be more proud of her community in the week following the worst day of her life. Abby Barr says she has received countless letters and comments in support of her family. Her twin daughters, Haley and Aubrey, are just three years old, so while they're too young to fully understand what exactly happened, she'll keep reminding them, she says, about who their dad was and what he meant to them. They've asked, but not as much as I was afraid they would. Um, but when they have, I remind them that daddy's a hero. You can watch more of our colleague Keely Arthur's interview with Abby over on channel3000.com. It is the top story on the front page this morning. There is an incredible amount of support for the Barr family and the entire Sun Prairie community. We got to see it firsthand here at News 3 yesterday. At last count, our day-long telethon, running from the start of our morning show through News 3 at 10, raised $143,000, an incredible effort by everyone involved. We're still counting online donations, so a final number will come in later today. All that money is going to stay local. It's going to benefit the families impacted by the blast, along with the Sun Prairie Food Pantry and the Sunshine Place. And there are other ways you can help the Sun Prairie community today. Marcus Cinema in Sun Prairie will be donating half its proceeds from popcorn sales all day. That money will also go to the Bank of Sun Prairie and its Disaster Relief Fund. 
Your time right now is 604 and Fitchburg police say that they are uh, reaching out to people living in the pockets of the city where they have responded to multiple gun related incidents in just the past week alone. Officers have already said they'll install more cameras and assign more officers to patrol the neighborhood around Leopold Elementary School. We spoke to at least one woman living in Fitchburg who says she's moving because of the violence. Our Josh Spreider is live where police will be meeting with the public tonight. Josh, good morning. Good morning. That meeting will take place here tonight off Red Arrow Trail at the Head Start Center. And one of those residents we expect to be here is Alejandra Juarez. She tells us that she does not feel safe in her own home. She also says she was already planning on moving out of her apartment on Thurston Lane before two gunfire incidents in the past week caused bullets to shatter glass and pierce her living room furniture. But the recent violence only convinced her it was the right decision for her family. I'm going to have four kids already. I mean, for the safety, I, sometimes I don't even want to go outside because I don't know if it's going to be safe or not. Police say the investigations into the recent shots fired incidents are still active and ongoing, and the department is already doing some things in response to that. The Fitchburg police chief says that they are actually installing some cameras upon Leopold Way and increasing patrols in Leopold Way and in the Thurston Lane areas. And we're also told that they're going to be looking at bringing the neighborhood officers back, which is something that they actually had to get rid of in recent years. Ladies? Certainly something that will have to be considered by council down the road as well. Funding's involved in all of this, but a safety issue, which is a pertinent at one Josh Breider reporting live from Fitchburg. Thanks, Josh. 606 your time now. We will learn later today how Wisconsin voters feel about the trade war that's hitting state farmers and businesses. The latest Marquette Law School poll results are being released at noon. We'll learn a couple of things from that survey, including some national topics like how people feel about the Trump administration's tariffs and his latest Supreme Court nominee, Brett Kavanaugh. It's also going to show who's leading in the Democratic primary for governor here in Wisconsin. Last month's poll showed a third of voters were still undecided in that race. Paul Soglin says he will not be running for mayor again after decades of involvement in Madison politics. Christina Laurie joins us live this morning in the newsroom to talk more about Mayor Soglin's time here in the city and what it may mean moving forward. Christina, good morning. Good morning, ladies. It's true. The man who had been dubbed by some as Madison's mayor for life is ending his local political career. 73-year-old Mayor Paul Soglin was first elected back in 1973 after three terms on the city council and has served 22 years as mayor on and off since then, most recently from 2011 until now. When he wasn't mayor, Soglin worked as an attorney and consultant, including at healthcare software giant Epic. Now Soglin isn't ready to leave politics entirely. He's currently seeking the Democratic nomination for governor against Scott Walker. He says one of the factors in his decision not to seek re-election was to show Wisconsin voters he is committed to his gubernatorial run. Now coming up in the next half hour of News 3 this morning, I'll talk about what Soglin says he hopes to do in the city of Madison before leaving office and what will be at the top of his agenda for the city's next mayor. Certainly the end of an era. I loved his quote yesterday. There will be no third sequel is what he told us. <laughs> Christina Laurie reporting from the News Center. Thank you, Christina. 608 your time now. A Sauk County woman looking for a way to make schools safer is up for a statewide award this fall. Her technology could warn students and teachers of a gunshot before they even hear it. We'll share more about her invention next. It's pretty cool, too. No need to sound the alarm on this forecast, though. It's going to be another gorgeous day out there. Hattie is looking ahead to some thunderstorms developing over the next couple of days, though. She'll have your full first alert forecast when News 3 This Morning returns.
Good morning from the Hattio Patio. Boy, it is a very comfortable start to the day today. We have temperatures down in the 50s, low dew points, and no, uh, ex no reason for those dew points to climb at all today. So a beautiful day ahead. Coming off a gorgeous day yesterday with highs in the low 80s here. Was a little bit cooler with the wind off the lake in Milwaukee. High temperature was just 77 degrees, but a nice day. And our 8 to 14 day temperature outlook, believe it or not, takes us into the last week of July. And it looks like below normal temperatures are possible for much of the country. The exception would be the West Coast and the desert Southwest, where above normal temperatures are expected to continue. So maybe cooling down just a little bit, kind of a more comfortable end to July. As far as precipitation is concerned, Looks like a little bit drier than normal for the state of Wisconsin. Now we do have some precipitation in our forecast, just not today. Doppler track showing you a uh, look at some showers and thunderstorms scattered across the midsection of the country, but those will not move into Wisconsin today. But tomorrow I do have rain in the forecast. We have mainly clear skies here. The sun is up this morning. Skies will turn partly sunny today. We're not dealing with any big time fog across the area, but visibility is still at a quarter of a mile in Boscoville. That's through the Wisconsin River Valley and about a half mile in Monroe. Here's a look at our temperatures early today. We have 59 right now in Madison, down to 54 in Lone Rock. It's still 60 in the Dells, but 48 in Camp Douglas this morning. Dew points, though, are in a very comfortable range and expected to remain fairly steady through the day. So take a look at future track if you have outdoor plans over the next couple of days. Shouldn't have any issues with the weather today. It looks beautiful with partly sunny skies this afternoon. Highs in the low 80s. Great conditions for concerts on the square this evening. Temperatures will be dropping back into the 70s. Now for tomorrow, watch for some clouds to increase from the west and some rain to move in later in the day. Future track is keeping that rain to the west through the early afternoon hours. But as we head towards the evening, some showers and thunderstorms begin to spread across southern Wisconsin. And it looks like those rain chances will stick around through Friday and possibly even into Saturday. The risk for thunder on Saturday pretty low, so just some scattered showers with a high of 81. And it looks like dry weather on Sunday with highs at 83. Now it's time to get a check on your first alert traffic with Josh Tim. Good morning, Josh. And yeah, good morning. It is quite started on most of the Madison roadways. The belt line is moving well right now with no major issues showing up in either direction. There are some roads here in Dane County that are beginning to pick up, though. Look for some brake lights on northbound Verona Road near the belt line, along with Stoughton Road approaching those belt line ramps. No problems with slowdowns downtown around the Capitol Square and UW campus. Volume is not a factor at this point. And other main routes heading into the city are cruising along at the posted speeds with no crashes or delays. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. All right, thanks, Josh. Thanks, Hattie. Madison might be taking police officers out of its high schools. The State Journal reports a city committee wants to create a liaison program that takes officers, currently posted at all four high schools, out of the hallways. Those officers would operate outside the district, but still get specialized training and be in regular contact with school administrators. That committee meets with the school board to talk about the idea today at 4. New this morning, a Baraboo woman who designed a gunshot detecting security system is up for a statewide award for her invention. We introduced you to Stacy Jacks and her Trinity gunshot alarm system back in March. The former teacher started working on that system after the mass shooting in Parkland, Florida, and the one at Sandy Hook Elementary School. This works like a fire alarm. Sensors were actually tested out extensively to detect the noise of a gunshot, distinguish it from other loud noises, and sound the alarm. The Trinity system is also able to pinpoint the location of a gunshot in the building. Jax is now a finalist for the 2018 Wisconsin Innovation Awards. The winners will be announced in October during a ceremony at the Wisconsin Union. In theater. Girl Scouts USA is doing its part to get more women into leadership positions in the careers that are usually dominated by men. Girls can earn 30 new badges and a handful of new projects on topics like cybersecurity, environmental engineering, robotics, and space exploration. The CEO of the Wisconsin chapter says the options will help build girls' confidence in the STEM fields. A global company producing technology that helps scientists treat diseases. It's Getting a lot bigger, its current Madison headquarters is designed to minimize environmental impact, and its new $190 million edition will do the same. We'll tell you more about that coming up. And you won't want to be under the big top today. Hattie's calling for lots of sunshine and temperatures right around 80 again. We'll update your midweek forecast when News 3 This Morning continues.
Good morning, I'm meteorologist Hattie McLean with your first alert weather forecast for this Wednesday. We're talking about beautiful conditions once again. Great start in Platteville this morning. Our Queen Bee Radio Sky Cam showing you crystal clear skies there. We have not a whole lot showing up on the satellite and radar maps this morning. Things are pretty quiet around here. No rain in our forecast today. Skies will turn partly sunny as we head towards the afternoon. But take a look at those temperatures into the mid 70s by lunchtime, climbing to highs in the low 80s in many spots today. Our extended forecast does bring rain back into the area in a little cooler conditions for the end of the week. Highs will be in the upper 70s. Have a wonderful day. Thank you very much, Hattie. Sounds like good cooking out weather. And if you buy some pre-made sides at hy V, the grocery store is recalling a pasta salad over salmonella concerns. The recall includes one pound and three pound containers of the spring pasta salad produced between June 1st and July 13th. Expiration dates on those range from June 22nd to August 3rd. According to the chain, nearly 20 people have already gotten sick after eating the pasta salad. So far, no one from Wisconsin has fallen ill. But the grocer says the pasta salad was distributed to all of its locations. A local biotech company is breaking ground on a $190 million building in Fitchburg today. The Fitchburg City Council approved a new TIF district to help Promega Corporation expand, meaning that project could get around $15 million in public money. Construction on the 270,000 square foot facility is going up next to the existing campus near Fish Hatchery Road. The groundbreaking ceremony is this afternoon at 3.30. If you're an artist looking for an apartment or maybe thinking about joining the circus, Danica's nodding over here. I don't think so. We've no, got, thank you. We've got some good news for you. Later today, there's going to be a groundbreaking for a new development on Madison's east side that will house mixed income apartments, an artist co-op site, and a circus training center. It's going up along Winnebago Street next to Ford's gym. Mayor Soglin should be at the groundbreaking. It starts at 11 this morning. I will say I want to know where you read that my secret, you know, aspiration is to be a professional clown. Oh, Adam's told the whole newsroom. Ah, darn it. <laughs> that Adam. <laughs> 622 your time now. People living just off Verona Road are waiting to hear if Fitchburg police plan to add cameras and officers to their neighborhood after an uptick in gun violence. But lots of cases just in the past week alone. Our Josh Breider is going to have the details live. And a group of jurors is saying Madison Parks Department did not have a good reason to fire some of the people running city golf courses. The day's top stories are next on News 3 this morning.
After five gun-related incidents in just the past week, Fitchburg police are taking action to keep their residents safe. This is News 3 This Morning. Good morning and welcome back to News 3 This Morning. It is 625 now on this Wednesday, July 18th, and a gorgeous Wednesday we're waking up to. Yeah, Patty continues to be the deliverer of the best news of the morning. She is out on the patio, 59 degrees out there. Hattie, how's it feeling? It feels great, and I'm going to remember these mornings come January when it's not so nice out here. But we have a great start on this Wednesday. Sun is up this morning. Skies are clear. Take a live look from the Edgewater Sky Cam at downtown Madison. Beautiful start to your Wednesday. A little bit of fog in the area, though, especially just in the river valleys, mainly for quarter mile visibility in Boscobel. Earlier we did have some fog in Monroe, but it looks like that has already dissipated. Fog is not a widespread issue this morning. We're starting with temperatures in the 50s in many spots today. 59 in Madison, 58 in Watertown, and 57 in Janesville. High temperatures this afternoon will climb into the lower 80s. Again, partly sunny skies and low humidity expected. Now let's get a look at your first alert traffic maps around the area. We'll show you what's happening on the roads. Nothing not happening to slow you down just yet on the Beltline. Volume still low both directions. No delays in the downtown area either. If you're traveling into Madison, there are no accidents report at this time. So travel's going at posted speeds. And that's your first alert traffic. Patty, thank you so much. We start this half hour with an Illinois senator's call for a full federal investigation. This into a shelter in Chicago where migrant children were reportedly dragged and threatened by staff. The Washington Post first reported this alleged abuse. Kids told the reporters there they felt like prisoners. One boy said that he was held in isolation for three weeks with the chicken pox. That shelter is run by human rights organization Heartland Alliances. It comes as child detention centers down near the U.S.-Mexico border have faced similar criticisms. In Richland County, the woman accused of helping her boyfriend sexually assault a child will enter a plea in her own charges today. Police say 43-year-old Annette Winger lied to the guardians of a 12-year-old so she could take the girl to her boyfriend, 47-year-old John Elder. Winger also allegedly told the child that Elder would kill himself if she didn't have sex with him. Winger faces a felony charge of failure to protect a child. The man accused of starving and neglecting eight children in Beloit is scheduled to be back in court today as well. 39-year-old Lakedrick McCoy faces one felony charge and five misdemeanor counts of child neglect. Eight children were taken from his home where he and 40-year-old Heather McCoy lived. All of the children were reportedly underfed and living in dirty conditions. Heather McCoy was in court last week and pleaded not guilty to her charges that she faces for child neglect. Child Protective Services reports that she had other children taken from her in the past. Heather McCoy is currently waiting on her trial date. Lakedrick McCoy is set to be arraigned today in Rock County Court. 628 right now and some Fitchburg neighbors say they are moving out of the city because they don't feel safe in their own homes. There's a meeting tonight where police are hoping to address some of those concerns. Our Josh Breider is live in Fitchburg with the details. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Fitchburg police will meet with the community once again here at the Head Start Center tonight. It is the second night in a row they'll be talking about a stretch of five gun related incidents in the past week. Last night, the department's chief said those investigations are ongoing, but in the meantime, they'll they're looking at adding cameras to the Leopold Way and Thurston Lane areas and increasing patrols there. And as they go through the pro budgeting process this fall, they'll also look at adding dedicated neighborhood officers to those areas here. And I think uh, uh, initially uh, neighborhood officers would be beneficial in this neighborhood and also uh, Thurston, uh, Dunsmarsh, Ally Drive slash Jamestown. Uh, and then we can see where that program goes from there and whether or not we feel like we could potentially uh, need to add additional police officers. The police chief also brought up the idea of hiring more officers overall, but did acknowledge there are some budgetary restraints that might make that difficult. And adding to those challenges, recruitment numbers are also down right now for Fitchburg police. Ladies. Very interesting, and we will be sure to keep an eye on all of this as the financial part of this keeps unrolling as well. Tonight's meeting starts at 630 again, where Josh is at the Head Start Center on Red Arrow Trail. Thank you, Josh. Janesville police are looking into a uh, stabbing they say happened earlier this week. They're looking for 27 year old Shedrick Baldwin. He was last known to live in Beloit. He's a suspect in that attempted murder that happened on Monday that has one man in the hospital with life threatening injuries. Police say the stabbing wasn't random and that the two did know each other. 
6.30 your time now. The man dubbed by some as Madison's mayor for life won't be on the ballot next year, for mayor at least. In his words, he won't have a third sequel after serving three separate terms as Madison's mayor. Mayor Paul Soglin says he is shifting his focus to the Democratic primary for governor happening next month. Christina Laurie has more on what the longtime mayor hopes to accomplish before leaving and what advice he has for the person who takes his place. Good morning, Christina. Good morning, ladies. As he finishes out his third and final mayoral term, Paul Soglin says his priorities will be continuing efforts to reduce violence and improve safety in Madison. The State Journal asked him whether leaving office could impact major projects like the Madison Public Market on the east side, the downtown Judge Doyle Square development, or the revitalization of the former Oscar Meyer plant. Soglin says that if they get the right mayor and the right leadership, those projects should continue smoothly. So far, Soglin is backing former City Council member Satya Rhodes Conway for mayor, calling her far superior in every way to the other candidates who have already announced. Alder Maurice Cheeks of District 10 and former council, City Council Mayor Brenda Conkle, who will formally make her announcement tomorrow night. As for what he hopes the next mayor will do, Soglin cautions both the next mayor and the City Council to remain focused on Madison's debt service, which he has tried to rein in since retaking office in 2011. A lot of initiatives, Christina, you just mentioned there that Mayor Soglin has really spearheaded the public market, Judge Doyle Square, the no drinking in the downtown area. So it'll be interesting to see. He'll have a legacy for sure. Yeah. All right, Christina Laurie, thank you so much. The city of Madison will have to pay a quarter of a million dollars to the golf pros it fired six years ago. The State Journal reports a jury ordered the city to pay damages to the men who managed golf courses at Odana Hills, Yahara Hills, Monona and Glenway after their contracts weren't renewed back in 2012. Mayor Soglin testified in that case, saying he backed the plan because more money was needed for the 2013 budget. Jurors decided, though, the city didn't have a good enough reason not to renew those contracts. Those pros wanted more than $2 million for lost income. They'll get $287,000 instead. In Rock County, demolition at Janesville's Monterey Dam continues today after a judge dismissed a case attempting to stop that demolition. Monterey Dam is one of the oldest ones in Rock County, and some people who live near it say taking it down could decrease their property values. The Monterey Dam Association filed a civil lawsuit against the city of Janesville one day before demolition began and yesterday that suit was dismissed. The city does plan on redeveloping the area near the dam. It's something local business owners say could actually help the area. So if we can create more fishing atmosphere, kayak, canoeing availability, you know, and just a nice river, nice smooth flowing river, I think it's everybody in the long run is going to win. Again, demolition of the dam is scheduled to continue today. If you live in Janesville, you might be seeing a big increase in your water bill next year. The Janesville Gazette reports that city staff want to implement a nearly 25% increase starting at the end of 2019. The council held a meeting last night to talk about the long-term finances of the city's water utility. The city's finance director says reserve levels have been in the red for years now. There's no final decision yet this morning. The council will take another look at the idea next month. 634 right now, and we're learning even more from paperwork that was filed about what kind of work was being done when an explosion sparked in downtown Sun Prairie last week. And updates coming up in the morning sprint. And you know we love people helping people stories here on the show, and we could not be more proud of our viewers and their generosity for the Sun Prairie community. We'll update you on how much everyone gave in yesterday's telethon when News 3 This Morning continues.
Welcome back. 637 on this beautiful Wednesday morning. We always ask you to share your morning with us. And Thomas Klein posted this from the woods. And it almost looked, God forbid me saying this, like a little bit of snow. I told her I, not to say it. It's all flowers. Don't worry. Thomas, really cool shot. Thank you so much for uh, possibly getting mosquito bitten a lot for that picture. <laughs> what does your morning look like? Hopefully you're not getting bitten while you're taking a picture, but post it on the Channel 3000 Facebook page or on Twitter using the hashtag MyNews3Morning. We're going to share our favorites every morning right here on News 3 This Morning. So the widow of Captain Corey Barr, the firefighter who died in last Tuesday's explosion in Sun Prairie, says she could not be more proud of her community in the week following what she calls the worst day of her life. Abby Barr says she's received countless letters and comments in support of her family. Her twin daughters, Haley and Aubrey, are just three years old. So while they're too young to fully understand what happened, she will keep reminding them who their dad was and what they meant to him. They've asked, but not as much as I was afraid they would. Um, but when they have, I remind them that daddy's a hero. You can watch more of our colleague Keely Arthur's interview with Abby over on channel3000.com. It is the top story on the front page this morning. And there is, of course, an incredible amount of support for the Barr family and the Sun Prairie community at large. And we here at News 3 got to see it firsthand yesterday. At last count, our day-long telethon running from the start of our morning show. You may remember we had some live shots from the very early riser volunteers with us. This went all the way through News 3 at 10, and we raised $143,000. We are still counting online donations, so a final number will be available later today. Be sure to tune in to News 3 for that. All of the money 100% of it is staying local. It'll benefit the families impacted by the explosion, along with the Sun Prairie Food Pantry and the Sunshine Place. Thank you to all of you who donated, and please consider giving if you haven't. I get emotional just thinking about it, thinking about all of the people who yeah. stepped up and supported that cause, stepped up and supported all the families over in Sun Prairie. So again, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can't say it enough. Nope. 640 your time now. We cannot get enough of this weather that Hattie has been able to forecast so far this week, but Soak in that sun today, everybody, because we could see some storms and some rain over the next few days. Your first alert forecast is next. Picnic point looking good this morning. First, it is July 18th. Happy birthday to Emmett and all of the kiddos turning three today.
Welcome back. You were taking a live look this morning on the west side of the city from the WISC Skycam. You can see that bright sun front and center. Really going to be a beautiful day. That sun should be out for most of your Wednesday. Hattie will have an update here in a little bit, including a bit of a change in the forecast. First, though, if you've been looking to take a trip to see Niagara Falls, you could have a bit of an easier time getting there soon. Yeah, the new Gordie Howe International Bridge over the Detro Detroit River will give drivers a direct route from Detroit to Windsor, Ontario. It's expected to be the longest cable bridge in all of North America. It increases lanes there to six for drivers and adds a bike lane as well. Officials broke ground on construction yesterday. The bridge should be finished by 2020. We could soon see milk alternatives made with almonds, soy, or other plant-based products called something different in the grocery store. FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb said yesterday at a political event in D.C. that he plans to enforce the definition of milk as a product that comes from an animal. That rule is already on the books, but dairy farmers across the country have been fighting for more strict enforcement of it, saying labeling the alternatives as milk is misguiding consumers. According to farm babe Pam Yonke, she told us this morning that traditional milk sales have dropped about 30% since those non-dairy products came on the market. All right, folks, join me in breaking out the kayaks, any outdoor activities you wanna do, enjoy that sun before we see a bit of a change. Right, Hattie? That's true. Today is perfect for any activity outside. And speaking of outside activities, concerts on the square tonight, the weather looks perfect. Now, highs today will be in the low 80s, so we'll still be right around 80 at 6 p.m., but when the concert starts at 7, 78 degrees, dropping into the mid-70s then by 8. Eight. Partly sunny skies expected. No rain in the forecast tonight. There is some rain that will move in tomorrow, though. Here's a look at GFS future tracks starting tomorrow morning. You see pretty widespread rain across parts of Minnesota and Iowa. That all spreads to the east through the day, so that rain will continue to move eastward on Thursday, arriving into southern Wisconsin uh, by the uh, late afternoon or evening hours. And then on and off showers and thunderstorms are in the forecast through Friday and even Saturday. Now, the intensity should diminish and the coverage should diminish just a little bit on Saturday, more so on Sunday. Total rain, though, for this event is still looking like around an inch across parts of southern Wisconsin. It's been pretty dry around here, so some rain is generally good news. Here's a look at our satellite and radar map this morning, though. As I mentioned, pretty quiet conditions early today. No rain in our forecast, hardly any clouds showing up on the satellite map. Here's the view from the Edgewater Sky Cam looking out over Picnic Point. Again, clear skies across all of southern Wisconsin. 59 here in Madison, 61 in Mineral Point. Temperatures are still similar to that uh, as you head towards the Lakeshore area, 63 in Milwaukee and 60 in Watertown. Our dew points are in the 50s this morning and look at this dew point trend remaining steady through the day today, so low humidity is expected. Here's a look at your Pinpoint City forecast highs today with partly sunny skies. Enjoy a high temperature right around 78 in New Glarus, as well as Evansville, 80 in Fort Atkinson and Watertown. To the west, temperatures will be very similar, 80 in Prairie du Chien and Muscaday, 79 in Richland Center, and to the north, 78 in Baraboo, as well as Mauston and Montello. Here in Madison, we should top in the lower 80s today with partly sunny skies. We're looking at a high of 82 degrees. Grab that umbrella for Thursday and Friday. Some showers even lingering into Saturday. Temperatures will be a little cooler Thursday, Friday, but then back into the 80s for the upcoming weekend. And here's Buster in Albany. Oh, buddy. Busted on the table. It's like... <laughs> but looking very regal. Get outside today, Buster. Get off that table no. and outside. <laughs> He's like, uh-uh, don't think so. I'm sure he'll find a sunny place to nap. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, thanks, Hattie. You're welcome. Your morning sprint's coming up next on News 3 This Morning.
It is 6.50 time now for the morning sprint. Hattie says it's going to be another warm, beautiful day today before the chance for storms roll back in. She'll have an update. And Christina Laurie is talking about Paul Soglin's last term as Madison's mayor. Josh Spreider is live in Fitchburg, where police are meeting with neighbors about gun violence in concentrated parts of that city. But we start in Sun Prairie this morning, where the police department and OSHA continue separate investigations into who could be held liable for last week's deadly explosion. The company hired to work on fiber networks in that city did have the permits to do so. Bayer Communications filed that paperwork back in April, which was released yesterday. It subcontracted with VC Tech to actually complete the Verizon wireless project in Sun Prairie. That Florida-based company, however, was not listed on the permits. It's unclear, though, if that was necessary. There is an incredible amount of support for the Sun Prairie community, and we got to see it firsthand here at News 3 yesterday. At last count, our day-long telethon, running from the start of our morning show through News 3 at 10, raised $143,000. We're still counting online donations, so a final number will come in later today on News 3. And you can still donate online. We have a link up on our website on channel3000.com. We wanted to remind you that Marcus Cinemas in Sun Prairie will be donating half of its proceeds from popcorn sales today. All of that money will also go to the Bank of Sun Prairie's Disaster Relief Fund. There will also be $5 tickets for movies today, all day to help families take a break on a budget. The woman accused of helping her boyfriend sexually assault a child will enter a plea in her own charges today. Police say 43-year-old Annette Winger lied to the guardians of a 12-year-old so she could take the girl to her boyfriend, 47-year-old John Elder. Winger also allegedly told the child that Elder would kill himself if she didn't have sex with him. Winger faces a felony charge of failure to protect a child. The man accused of starving and neglecting eight children in Beloit is set to be arraigned later today. 39-year-old Lakedrick McCoy faces one felony charge and five misdemeanor counts of child neglect. Eight kids were taken from the home where he and 40-year-old Heather McCoy lived. All of the children were reportedly underfed and living in dirty conditions. Heather McCoy, McCoy pleaded not guilty to the charges she faces last week. Happening tonight, Fitchburg police want to hear from you in a public meeting about recent gun-related crimes. There have been multiple shots fired incidents in the past week in the Fitchburg area, two of those near the same apartment complex on Thurston Lane. The meeting tonight will focus on the increase in gun violence in that neighborhood with people living there getting the chance to share their concer concerns with local police. It's the second of two meetings on the topic. Fitchburg's police chief says while the overall crime trend is down over the past 10 years, they still wanted to be open with the community right now. Tonight's meeting begins at 6.30 at the Head Start Center. Thanks, Josh. The State Journal reports Hy-Vee is recalling its spring pasta salad for potential salmonella contamination. The recall includes one pound and three pound containers of the product produced between June 1st and July 13th. Upwards of 20 people got sick after eating the pasta salad, though no one in Wisconsin yet. Hy-Vee says the product was distributed to all of its stores. And we have clear skies across all of southern Wisconsin. We've been looking at all of our uh, sky cams earlier this morning. It is clear in Platteville. We have temperatures that are starting in the 50s and 60s. A nice climb, though, back into the mid-70s by lunchtime, climbing to a high of 82 degrees later on this afternoon. Light winds and low humidity today as well. Thank you, Hattie. We will get a better idea of how Wisconsin voters feel about a possible global trade war this afternoon. The latest Marquette Law School poll results will include those opinions about tariffs and the president's latest Supreme Court nominee. It also is going to show who might be leading the Democratic primary for governor and the Republican primary for U.S. Senate. Last month's poll showed that about a third of voters were still undecided in those races. Madison Mayor Paul Soglin says he won't seek re-election for local political office, instead turning his focus to seeking the Democratic nomination for governor. So far, three people with local government experience have announced their mayoral candidacy. Those people are District 10 Alder Maurice Cheeks and former city, city council members Satya Rhodes-Conway and Brenda Conkle, who will formally make her announcement tomorrow night. Soglin is backing Rhodes-Conway, calling her far superior in every way to the other candidates who have announced he cautioned the next mayor and the city council to remain focused on Madison's debt service, which he says he has tried to rein in since taking office. Thanks, Christina. City leaders will look at temporarily banning any new liquor licenses downtown, something the mayor says will help cut down on violence near State Street. Mayor Soglin recently vetoed an alcohol license for a Taco Bell cantina on State Street. That company that owns the fast food franchise is now suing the city over that decision. If the full council approves the ban, it would be in effect for six months.
Madison might be taking armed police officers out of its four high schools. The State Journal reports a city committee is looking at creating a liaison program instead, which would train about 20 Madison police officers to have relationships with the administrators and know a little bit more about school safety, but they would not be stationed in those four high schools themselves. The committee will meet with the school board to talk about this idea today at 4 o'clock. The Baraboo woman who designed a gunshot detecting security system is now a finalist for the 2018 Wisconsin Innovation Awards. Stacy Jax's Trinity gunshot alarm system works like a fire alarm. Sensors can detect the noise of a gunshot, then send out a building-wide alarm and a notification to first responders at the same time. The winners of the Innovation Award will be announced in October during a ceremony at the Wisconsin Union Theater. In Rock County, plans to remove the Monterey Dam in Janesville are moving forward this morning after a judge dismissed a case attempting to stop that demolition. The so-called Monterey Dam Association filed a civil lawsuit against the city of Janesville one day before that demolition began. Yesterday, however, the suit was dismissed. Some of the homeowners around there claimed that property values would go down, so the dam is scheduled to be dem demolished, continuing today. A local biotech company is breaking ground on a $190 million building in Fitchburg today. The Fitchburg City Council approved a new TIF district to help ProMega Corporation expand, meaning that project could get around $15 million in public money. Construction on the 270,000 square foot facility is going up next to the existing campus that's near Fish Hatchery Road. The groundbreaking ceremony is this afternoon at 3.30. 6.57 right now. Let's turn it over to Josh Shim with one more check on traffic. Good morning, Josh. Good morning. Delays already showing up on the westbound side of the Beltline between Stoughton Road and West Broadway. I would look for that to add an extra five minutes to your drive time. Inbound John Olin, you're tapping the brakes between Rimrock and Olin Avenue heading toward the downtown area. That's going to add a couple minutes there. And other main routes heading into the city, including on the interstate, they're cruising along at the posted speeds right now with no crashes or issues. Your first alert traffic, I'm Josh Tim. Thank you, Josh. And the view this morning outside is great. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there in the pool, grooming a little bit. Great day to head to the zoo today. We have perfect weather conditions. Here's a look at your day planner temperatures. Climbing quickly through the 60s, mid 70s by lunchtime, 82 at 4 p.m. All right, thank you very much, Addie. Enjoy that day out there. We appreciate you joining us here, and we will see you tomorrow on News 3 This Morning.